Hello my fellow geeks. Today we are going to look at the brand new Propel high performance battling drone quadcopters. We actually have two of them to look at. We have the TIE Advanced X1, better known as Darth Vader's TIE Fighter, and then we have the T-65 X-Wing. Propel was generous enough to send us the TIE Advanced for review, which we're very grateful for. We'll be showing extra reviews on that in the future. But today we're going to look at the Propel X-Wing, which my wife got for me for Christmas. So we're going to unbox that one from scratch so you can see exactly how everything comes out and everything, how everything looks. So we're going to slide the TIE Advanced out of the way for now. Again, there will be a link probably at the end of this video with some more videos for that. Um, or there will also be a link up in the corner if we've already posted it. But if you're just seeing this brand new posted, it won't be up yet. So the boxing on these things, you're going to hear me say amazing over and over and over on these because they are. I've gotten to play with the TIE Advance just a little bit, but they're really unbelievable. When they were first announced, I thought at $200... They were kind of expensive. Um, I have a number of quadcopters ranging in the $50, or sorry, in the $15 to several hundred dollars for an FPV racing quad, but these without having FPV just seemed uh, expensive to me. Here's one little bit of detail. Even the foam that it comes with has the name on it. So these boxes are so nice, you're going to want to keep all of them. But for now, we're just going to throw them out of the way. These boxes are especially nice, and you're going to want to keep all of them. So we'll get it out of the box here. So these are go boxes that you're going to want to keep forever. One, they have nice black molded plastic cases on them. They are wax sealed, and they have lots of information on them. So it's nice that they're wax sealed so you know that it's actually in there. You can pop those off and then use them for whatever you want later. Take the one off the other side, but here we go. Are you are you ready for this? How cool is that? It actually plays the entire intro to Star Wars. It's amazing. I hope there's not so much music there. I actually run into copyright problems. We might have too much music. So so you're thinking, wow, that's awesome. You open the X-Wing and it plays the, the theme to Star Wars and the TIE Fighter probably does the same thing. That would make sense. Except, no, that's not all because every time you remove the cover, it plays something different. So here, with, for the X-Wing theme, we have the X-Wing sinking into the swamp on Dagobah. Totally appropriate for an X-Wing. I'll tell you, the TIE Fighter has totally appropriate music as well. Oh, actually, this is Yoda lifting it out, removing it. I don't know how many tracks they have on here. I, I'll tell you, it's a lot. Um, there's going to be at least five, maybe seven, maybe more on there. I've just opened this one for the first time, so I don't know. We'll probably have another video that does nothing but show the covers being taken off of the boxes over and over and over. There also, I've got the two here, there also is a speeder bike. I'm assuming that plays a lot of the music from the chase on Return of the Jedi. But these are long tracks. And I don't know how well you can tell from the speaker, especially since I'm talking over it, but the sound quality of these is outstanding. They've got a nice big speaker that they have used to put this together. Okay, one, one more. One, just, just one more. Oh yeah, Trench Run, A New Hope. The one thing the quadcopter can't do is lock its X foils in attack position. Good 
cut the chatter right too. All right. So there's actually a vent in the back of the case to make the sound come through better so you can leave it on. The, just this case, really, really nice. Um, it makes it quite a showpiece. So, so there you go. It will keep going. If we would play more, it would keep playing more. But So we'll slide this off and show you what it looks like to take this out of the box. This is really nice. I'll, I'll say this is one thing I don't care for, probably the only thing. This is just pressed on here, so you just pull this off which means when we get to it that there are no propellers on this. So we might even do, a, I'll show it here a little bit, we might do a separate video on how to set these up the first time because it's, it's a little rough. So you pull that off and the motors are here ready to go but there are no props on it so you do have to figure out how to install those. Um, because the battery, the shape on the X-Wing is just a little odd but it still looks still looks pretty good. I will definitely accept it. So then the stand here, speaker, everything built right in. Uh, I noticed also there's a charging port. So this has a built-in LiPo, I'm assuming, battery. But it, you can charge this. So when these run down and these LEDs, obviously LEDs in here, uh, start to go low, the music's not as good, you can recharge it so it keeps going. One more thing, use two fingers to lift. It is important. So we use two fingers to lift out the body. So be very careful when you're opening this. You don't want to ruin any of the packaging. Uh, that would be a catastrophe. So, and they've made it so easy that you shouldn't have that be a problem. So we'll slide out cases here. So what I'm going to do is slide these out. And we have the instructions here on the bottom. I'm just going to close this up and put it right back in the box. That way we don't have to worry about it later losing it. And now we're all ready to go with our storage. Now we can do everything else. So in the box, we have a training cage, which is nice for when you're learning. And also what I found this training cage is nice for is if you're on carpet. Because these have the propellers on the bottom, if you have thick carpet, it actually causes a problem. So the training cage is really nice if you're in, flying inside on the carpet. So we'll put that on and we'll use it here. The controller, which the white controller it's really nice all the buttons are in place so we have multiple settings available that we'll go over the settings in uh, later videos and battery holder we'll put the batteries in later in the video because I'll tell you that's actually almost as good as opening the box installing the batteries amazing seriously wall charger extra batteries so the piece that it comes with here is not a battery it comes with two batteries in the case. So one of the first things we're gonna do here is go ahead and get this charging. The case here that it comes with and the wall charger, we're gonna go ahead and plug this in and get this charging so we can try it as soon as the batteries are ready to go. It's USB charging, so if you, it comes with the adapter. If you need it, great. If you already have USB adapters to plug it into, you don't have to worry about it. But here I will use this along with one of the extra cords that I have just for charging purposes. So there's just going to be a port here. Some, there it is. It's on the side. And these, it's interesting, it's actually the canopy that fits on here. These batteries are, I'm sure they're LiPos, and it, this these are 800 milliamp batteries. Uh, it looks like single cell 1S 800 milliamp batteries. They fly a long time though. So let's see. That pops in like that. So we have flashing light, so it's solid, meaning it's plugged in, ready to go. It's flashing, meaning it's charging. When it turns blue, we're at 90% charge. When it turns green, it's done and charged and ready to go. So we'll slide that out of the way for now. One more package that we've got here. They did a really good job with these for uh, the extra accessories. One, um, laser tips because these are that's always a fragile point on these types of x-wings you fly into the wall you hit them just wrong they're going to snap so it's really nice that's actually a really nice extra attention to detail that they give you extras that you can install to fix it um, we have extra screws not sure what those are for probably for yeah it looks like you have to screw the laser on so those are extras for that i'm not sure what the bigger screws are for 
We have props to install, A props, B props. So you'll need some of those. And even a really nice tool. So this tool is used both for installing and removing. Just grabbing hold of the propellers and pulling them off is not a good idea. You wanna use this tool when you get to it. So there we go. We're gonna pull out the manual, which the manual is pretty well done, but I'll show you the one piece that I think is a little tricky. Well, getting at the manual, I cleaned up the space a little bit. So we have pilot handbook, <laughs> just nice, nice attention to detail. Covers everything that you need to know. Has a nice fold out, open tab. Shows you a quick, quick start on what all the bat buttons do. So calibrate gyro, which is very important. Turn off the LEDs, auto start and land, which you're gonna need to know. Bluetooth sync for future integration, which uh, hopefully we get to cover in the future when we have apps enabled. Shows you what all the buttons do, what everything does. Everything is really well done here. It shows you how to add the batteries, which is important. How to connect the batteries, which we've already done. It does show you the same thing, blue LED at 90% green when it's fully charged. Um, so don't fly in the rain. It shows you how. So here's, here's where I think it gets important. Okay, so you have to install the propellers. If this is your first quadcopter, this is really important. You have to know the A propellers go on the front left and the back right when the ship is sitting right side up. And B is in the upper right and lower left. So that's really, really important because if those are backwards, it, when you try and take off, it's just going to push itself into the ground. The one difficult portion is it's easier on the X-Wing than I'll, I'll say than it was on the TIE Fighter to tell, okay, well, that's from upside right side up. But to install them, you actually have to flip it upside down. So now keep in mind, these are backwards. When you have it upside down, A is in the upper right and lower left. So it's the opposite of what you've got there. But then it's really easy to see. They're marked here. And with these, you just press them on. So I'm going to go and take one of these out. Okay, so these are just press on blades. So you just find the side with the hole, not the round side. I have an A here, so I'm going A in the upper right hand corner because we're upside down and you slide it on. This is where this tool is nice because it is recessed in order to set properly on this shaft and line everything up. So I just grab a hold of the opposite side, press on pretty hard, and it will slide right on. So you just do that. I have another A here. We'll slide it on on this side. So you can see the, X, the S foils are kind of in a mixed position. They're not flat. They're not quite in an X shape. It's probably just what they had to do to make the model work, but it still looks really nice. So now we use the B, do the same thing on the other propellers. Meantime, we're still waiting for that battery to charge. The first time it charge, it takes about 30 minutes to charge the battery the very first time. That's quite a while, so be ready for that. But there's plenty of other things to do in the meantime. I'm not gonna make you sit and watch the battery charge for 30 minutes. We'll find other things to do. Like install the ba other batteries. Just wait, you, you have no idea what you're in for. So we're gonna do the same thing here. You don't really have to have this, but it is nice. It saves your finger or your thumb so you don't uh, mess up your thumb. And it does make sure you don't bend the shaft because that would be a catastrophe. And it allows you to make sure they're pressed on all the way. Okay, so there we've got that. Next up, the controller batteries. So the first time I did this, I went to and grabbed a screwdriver as you would do because there are screws. Even though screws are super annoying to have to put on and take off, um, this isn't really a kid's toy, but for safety, you have to use a screwdriver. Except, oh, what's this? It is a lightsaber shaped screwdriver built into the controls. How amazing is this thing? It just so happens that it fits perfectly in the screw holes here and allows you to remove them without having to have external screws. So all you have to do is take off the cover here and you are good to go. So we're gonna just take the screwdriver off or take the screws out, slide off the cover. There we go. Then we need four batteries and it shows you which way to put them in. Oh, what was that? Interesting. On one battery. Alien needs you. Insert four AA batteries into the battery compartment. <laughs> May the force be with you. This is under the battery cover. 
That's how much attention to detail they put on this thing. Let's see. Make sure I get them right. I don't mess it up, mess it up in the process. Can we get it to do more, anything else? into the battery compartment that is that is a huge extra may the force be with you I mean my goodness how much how, how nice do you have to make something that the fact that you're just putting in batteries is an experience with this thing um, they, they just really spared no expense in making it absolutely amazing And then you put the screws back in, and you're ready to go. May the force be with you. Oh, there you go. So, we've got the controller here. We're not connected to anything yet because we don't have any batteries. But we have basic Yavin staging ground. And, let's see. So it, until I bind this to the quadcopter, I can't do anything. Normally what we'll be able to do is actually control the volume, change the music that's playing. There's a whole bunch of options with it. Okay, the light is green. Let's put these batteries in. It's nice and easy on this. We have a little clip here to pull back, and it will release the canopy. You see just a empty canopy here, which comes off. New one should just go right in. I, I guess I've not tried it yet. I say it's nice and easy, but it should be nice and easy. Flip, flip the front a little bit so it did have to go underneath push this back forward to lock it in place there we go locked in place we lights are flashing there does not seem to be any on or off switch for these um, they just power on as soon as you put in the batteries so then we've got the controls turn the control on push up pull down X -wing engage. we're bound so let's see what music we've got here Fanfare. Track two. Oh. Track three. Nice. Track four. <sighs> Track five. Music shuffle. So there's only five tracks on this. Another thing uh, I, I'll point out is on the box, I talk about how much music it plays. Um, it only plays four tracks on this one, which is less which is less than what you get on the TIE Fighter. But the tracks are a lot longer. These tracks are really, really long. So they're very impressive. It's almost better if you're showing it off to be able to lift it off and just let it go. So now we're going to move this over and do a first flight. We're not going to do a full flight review on this, but we're just going to do a first flight just so you can see what it looks like in the air. One last thing before we fly, I am actually going to install the prop guard on it. Less to protect the props, I'm not too worried about it. I think I'll be able to control it well enough. But because these are on the bottom, um, really with my thick carpet that I've got in my basement where I'm going to be testing it, I need them just so the blades don't get bound up. With a little more practice and when I'm not filming, I'll probably just put it on a hard surface so I can take off and then landing, it won't be an issue. Um, on the carpet. It'll probably actually be a good thing. But when you get these on here, make sure they're slid all the way to the bottom and there's actually little recesses that they clip into to make sure that they're uh, they're good and tight and it won't move. You definitely don't want this coming off and moving on you while you're flying around. It would probably stick on one of the blades and that would cause a catastrophe. So again, to power it on, just hit the button. Up, down. We are bound. Ready for takeoff. This button will actually take off. You don't press the stick in order to take off, which is a little weird for me. You actually launch it with a stick. We're in the air. And we're level. And man, I didn't I forgot to uh, balance it out. I'm just barely barely touching the stick and it's just staying there. 
There. No stick. It, it goes forward just a little bit. So we can change the flight speed modes. There, there's the default on one, and it's pretty slow. Which is good if you're starting out. But then it goes up to two and three. When it talks about being 35 miles per hour, that's on mode three. We also have the option if we hold it down. Now it, it uh, controls the altitude. Like I can't go down. That's as low as it'll go if I'm pressing the down stick. Um, I can go up a little bit and we're not quite in camera, but I, I get about two feet from the ceiling is as close as we can get. So perfect if you've got kids. They recommend this thing for like 14 and up. Um, I think that's excessive. So we're gonna land again here. Okay, bring her in. So this button will level the flight controller and we'll take off again, see if that makes any difference. So I need just a little back left stick to back keep it balanced. I need to figure out, since there's no, the one thing I don't like is there's no manual trim. I want manual trim. And you want to see, actually see this on camera. So this is, this is the, there we go. This is the speed on mode one. And part of my flight control problems are because I'm trying to watch the camera and the controls at the same time. We go to two. It's faster. And three. And it's quick. It does nice. I like it. It just looks awesome in the air. It's easy to control. Easiest drone I've ever flown. Um, once you get it, once I figure out how to balance it out, and we might do another video for that to keep it level properly, you could easily just let go of this thing and have it stick exactly where it is. Easy mode. Um, we'll see for my son. This is far easier than anything else he's ever flown, so we'll definitely be able to let him fly. Because these are battle quads, we'll definitely be fighting these in the near future. So that's something we've got to have. And so we'll definitely have two of them. We do have laser cannons, which you can't see, unfortunately. Um, I think that's going to be an add-on that comes later. So there's a couple things that are going to be coming. Visible lasers and um, an app to be able to control it. So even here, I can show you this even while I'm flying it. It's easy enough. There's a control here that comes out to mount your phone on. So you'll be able to mount your phone and watch the battle as it progresses. So. I'm super impressed. These are awesome. This thing is just great. Uh, there will be more reviews coming showing all the additional options. So there's other height control options and volume options and laser options and all kinds of options. So I'll show you how everything works once I figure it all out. But that's okay, the end of this video. Right. Thanks for watching. Definitely, definitely recommend getting one of these. It's amazing. There's a link in the description if you need it to be able to find out where to get them. So thanks for watching. That's it. See you next time. Watch all the other videos I'm going to post about this. And remember, if you're going to be a geek, be an elite geek. I don't even have to dub in music. It's perfect. <laughs> I couldn't ask for it to be any better than that.